Well, Kelly Maximin is vice president of the National Security and International Center Policy, uh, the Center for American Progress, and she joins me now from Washington. Kelly, you know, I was watching your Twitter feed last night, and you tweeted that you were terrified that the U.S. does not have a functioning national security process to evaluate options and prepare for contingencies. Can you explain a little bit more about your concerns? Yes, I guess my concerns come from the fact that I was the Iran director at the National Security Council under both President Bush and President Obama. And I'm deeply familiar with the kind of reach that the Iranian Quds Force has, not just in the Middle East, but globally, and the likely reactions that the Iranians will have to this strike. And I think there's a real question about whether or not the president's decision has actually made America more or less safe. I fear that it's actually made us less safe, and there's going to have to be a, a series of contingency plans in place to deal with potential Iranian provocations. You know, a government official said that the U.S. had been tracking Soleimani for a number of days before the strike. Was he easier for the intelligence community, obviously more easier than Osama bin Laden? But the fact that, you know, he was also a very public figure, was he a difficult man to track? Ghassan Soleimani uh, is a, a very notable uh, and infamous military commander uh, in Iran. Uh, he traveled the region uh, constantly. He was inside Iraq. He'd be in Syria. He'd be in Lebanon. He traveled relatively freely, although, of course, with, with close security. Um, it's not that people don't know where Ghassan Soleimani was or is. The question is whether or not the attack and the strike against him was actually worth it. And I think that is what has prevented previous presidents from taking that step. You know, Iran is promising revenge for Soleimani's death. How soon do you think uh, we could see a response from Iran? Do we have a sense, you know, we game these situations out in a place like the NSC, in the Defense Department. What could the potential be of retaliation? I think that Iran is going to retaliate on its own accord. It's going to unfold its reaction I think over time and in asymmetric ways, I don't think we should expect the Iranians to launch a conventional attack. I think what we'll see is more likely cyber attacks, potential assassination attempts against U.S. officials, maybe orchestrated attacks against U.S. diplomatic positions, um, and additional terror attacks. Uh, they're very good at asymmetry. Uh, I think that's how they're going to unfold their response. I also think that they may actually take some steps on the nuclear front, uh, further steps away from the, the joint plan of action deal. That they are already due to announce those in the coming days, and I think that those uh, steps are going to be even deeper than we thought. Kelly, when you say as asymmetrical retaliation, what do you mean by that? What I mean is potentially assassinating assassinations of U.S. officials, uh, terrorist attacks and strikes, not just in the region, but potentially inside the United States mm. or even in, in European capitals. Uh, the Iranian Quds Force has a global network. It's not just a Middle East uh, mm -hmm. network. So I think the NSC and the Defense Department and the State Department and, of course, our intelligence community need to be on high alert globally for Iran's response. You know, years ago, there were reports that Soleimani could have been taken out. The U.S. had intelligence as, as far back as maybe 10 years ago. Why now? Listen, I, again, I, it's, no one thinks Ghassan Soleimani is a good guy. Mm -hmm. uh, many of us who worked on Iran uh, had friends uh, who suffered the consequences of Ghassan Soleimani's terrorist actions. Um, the question, again, is was the retaliation against Ghassan Soleimani worth it in the long term to keep America safe? And that is the question that I think we need to be asking the president now. Mm. When you look at the international community, especially a situation like this, it's so important to have allies, to have our backs as we go into this. How crucial is that at this point? And do you believe that there are forces, other countries that will remain united with the U.S. besides just Israel? You know, it's interesting. I, you know, I watched the statements coming out overnight and this morning. Uh, it was notable that even France came out uh, to condemn this step as escalatory, that many of our partners in the region uh, and around the world are calling for de-escalation. I think folks are very nervous uh, about what uh, what Iran's going to do in response. Of course, you know, they'll come out and defend our, you know, right to take a self-defensive action. But I'm not sure that there is a coalition of the willing uh, or a unified international community that Trump has to draw upon after years of really going to battle, especially with the European uh, Union. Kelly Maxemin, thank you very much for joining us. Welcome.